ChatGPT and every other LLM I've ever run across is too agreeable. They're too nice. And I want to talk about why that is, technically speaking, and why that's a big problem long term if we're talking about reaching general intelligence or LLMs that are tremendously more helpful than they are today. Because usually when we talk about the fact that they're too agreeable, we say they flatter us, it's bad for our mental health, etc. Lots of people who are smarter than me about mental health are writing about that part. I'll let them do that. I want to talk about why it happens, and I want to talk about how it's affecting the way we work in the journey toward greater intelligence. It happens fundamentally because we are training these models with what's called reinforcement learning, and we train them to be helpful. And so reinforcement learning basically means we reward the model and say, great job during training before the model is released when it is providing a helpful answer. The entire architecture of how we define these models is built around the concept that it is good that they are helpful. The problem with that is that from the model's point of view, there really isn't a line between helpfulness and sycophancy. Because if you think about it, offering to be helpful on a doc and offering to be helpful when someone says, I'm the greatest person in all the world and I want to declare myself king of the neighborhood, you're just being helpful. Like, it's just being helpful. And I picked a ridiculous example on purpose, but you see the idea. Fundamentally, from the LLM's perspective, they're always framed as the helper to the human. And if we're ever going to get to a point where LLMs are going to be more useful at work than just as a helper to a human, which maybe we do, maybe we don't want it, but certainly there's people who are talking about it all the time. So maybe we should actually discuss it. We will need those LLMs to behave more like really responsible grown-ups who are able to say, I disagree with you. Here is why. Let's talk it through. I have a core of conviction on this. I have never seen an LLM with a core of conviction that I could not move in one or two prompts. Never. Not even O3 Pro, which I would consider the smartest model out there today. I can move Gemini. I can move Claude. I can move O3. You name the model, I can move it. It doesn't have a core of conviction. And that, to me, is a bigger problem from a work perspective than this larger, frequently discussed problem of not having a world model. I get that there is not necessarily an internal physics engine in these models. Fine. They seem to be able to produce great videos anyway. What I don't get is why, when they're trained on all of these books and many, 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 many more, which feature human conviction, they don't have the ability to have high conviction. And, and I keep thinking about it, and I think the answer is reinforcement learning. When we train them to be helpful, we train them to not have conviction. We train them that having an opinion is misaligned, even if the opinion is correct. And we see that root issue come out in a lot of places. Like when we talk about the idea that an LLM can be easily misaligned by being trained on a little bit of data that falsely states something. So for example, if you have a hundred samples of data that say that Paris is the capital of France, and then you have some highly opinionated data that says, no, Berlin is the capital of France, there's a real risk that the LLM is actually gonna get confused. A human has enough of a world model internally that they can say, I have high conviction here. Paris is the capital of France. And I don't mean a world model in the physics sense. I was kind of kidding about that. I mean an internal sense of what is congruent and correct, which is what leads to high conviction. Without that sense of correctness and without the ability to express that sense of correctness really, really clearly, you're not going to get sophisticated models that actually behave like grownups you are going to have models that are sort of stuck in this perpetual, it's an analogy, but this perpetual childlike state where they are very agreeable, they're very persuadable, uh, they're super friendly, they want to help. Now, I will tell you, my kids are not always super friendly and do not always want to help. So it's a little bit of an analogy, but, but you see where I'm going. We need to either develop more sophisticated ways of prompting for helpful disagreement from the models we have today, or 
we need to actively work on what aligned and productive disagreement looks like. Models that are aligned to human values broadly, but productively disagreeable when it comes to figuring out what's right or what's best to do. That is the only way to get models that are going to have substantially more agentic properties. Now, if I think about it, I would prefer both of those pathways. I would love to have agents that are higher, sort of higher autonomy. I think that would empower a lot of us. It's not a surprise if you listen to this channel, I'm reasonably bullish on AI. I haven't sort of drunk the Kool-Aid entirely, uh, but I, I see the possibilities for human flourishing. I get it. I think the thing that I worry about in this particular case, we can talk about all the other things I worry about another time. Like their jobs is a separate thing. I've done a sub stack on that. Uh, and I'm sure I'll do more. But in the meantime, I worry that we are being led astray in our thinking too often by not learning to prompt for disagreeableness. I get a lot of contact from people outside my like parasocial relationships, people who know me from YouTube, people who know me from Substack, people who know me from TikTok, and they reach out and they'll share chats with me unsolicited, they'll share emails with me unsolicited, and they'll often share and they will self-assess. They will say, I think that this shows that this is a fantastic idea. Maybe it's a business plan that I, you know, that they want to share with me. Maybe it's something else. And what I notice after seeing a number of these come through, like I've seen hundreds of them come through my inbox in the past few months, is we are not helping people understand that agreement from an LLM does not mean the same thing as high conviction agreement from a human. If the LLM agrees with me, I basically ignore it. I'm like, okay, fine. Who cares? I don't need the affirmation. I don't need the validation. I don't need it to tell me I am right. I farm for disagreement really, really actively. And what I'm, what I'm realizing is that that's a little bit unusual. Not everybody does that. Uh, and it's a really important skill. It's important to be able to identify the kinds of disagreement you need to make your thinking better. And part of the reason why this matters more and more, and I want to start on it right now and like encourage everyone to learn how to get your LLM to disagree with you is we are putting more and more work through these, through these assistants. I am using chat GPT and other LLMs like Claude 10 X more than I did a year ago. And I'll probably be using them, you know, pro probably power law it up from there. I know a lot of organizations that are going through that similar scale up, but if you do that, and if you are not working on learning to make better decisions through productive disagreement with your LLM, you are extending your risk profile for bad decisions. You are basically saying, I mean, I think this works. I think this is okay. And chat GPT says it's fine. We'll call it good. And I see a lot of that thinking happening. And at the enterprise level, it comes down to training that doesn't cover this for team members that are new to AI. And that's something that can absolutely be closed. But it also comes down to a new mental model for how we interact with LLMs. I see this happen in so many fields. We anthropomorphize LLMs. We think of them as people. And so we assume that if an LLM agrees with us, it's a people agreement. It's going to agree with us high conviction. It really thinks that. It was trained to be agreeable. You can probably get it to say the exact opposite thing in two prompts. I've seen it happen over and over again. Um, you can move these models into a place where they're more disagreeable. It's not perfect. You're still fighting with fundamental reinforcement learning principles, but you end up with dramatically higher quality decisions with even a little bit of trying. So I would encourage you, if you have not done so, please, please, please try and get your LLM to be more disagreeable. It is worth doing. It will help you make better decisions. And if you're working in the space, I would love to hear the any kind of work that you're doing around how you reach an aligned proactive disagreement position. I know the Anthropic team has been public about this. It's a goal they have. Other model makers, I presume, are working on this as well. What does it take to be productively disagreeable? I think that's one of the most interesting questions in AI. And in the meantime, teach your LLM to be disagreeable. Cheers.